Today we continue with tutorial 4 on Spring Security tutorial for Java programmers and today we are going to be looking at custom login forms. In the previous lesson we be able to we were able to encrypt our password that we have in MySQL database and now we are going to be looking at custom login forms. I want to see how we can create our own uh, login form instead of to use the one that has been provided by Spring. So what I'm going to do, let me just run the application just to make sure everything is okay. Uh, I'm going to just right click. So right click and run as Spring Boots app, as you know. So if everything is fine, we are able to log in using 1234 or ABCD, uh, that will be fine. Uh, and that will be in the it will be in the in the form that has been provided uh, by Spring Boots. So so while it's starting up, I'm going to just shift this this way. And hopefully it's going to start up and I'm going to create a new tab. And from this tab, I'm going to run the application uh, saying HTTP localhost uh, port 8080. We are just drag this out so that we be able to. Okay. So if I go to home controller, we have slash home, slash home. That's where we, we need to go. So let me get back to the browser. Slash home. So we have it tells us login and the password should be user one, uh, user one. One, two, three, four, if I'm not forgetting anything. It should be user one, one, two, three, four. So it worked. Everything is still okay. Nothing is broken. So the idea is now is instead of to use, I have this log out I put here, but uh, never mind. Instead of to use this form, we want to create our own login form uh, because uh, this, this is too simple. We should be able to use CSAs and design something good. So for now, we do something simple, but to show that we can use our own HTML form to be able to log in. So let's for, follow the step. So this is tutorial one, two, three, four. We are in tutorial four at this point. So the first thing is to create a HTML page in the same place we created the home page because we are using time leave. So go to templates and I'm going to create a, a, a page. I'm going to call it login.html. So go to new order and choose HTML, that's fine, and just call it login.html. So let me allow it to add the extension for me. So this is a basic HTML file, a, a basic HTML file we are going to create. It's going to have a text, two text boxes for username and password and going to have a submit button. The two text boxes will have name to be name, uh, name of the first one will be username and name of the second one will be all the password. So set it in this way and then Spring is going to understand what you are doing. So copy, you can build this yourself, but I already done it for you. So you can just copy it and put it in the body section. All right. So this is a fairly simple form. The action of this button, the, act the action of this form is going to be slash login. Where is in time leave that's why we have, we have th colon action because we are using time leave which is a template management engine or a template engine. This uh, message here that is inside this pan tag is to display whether there is bad login or invalid credentials or, or not. So it's taken from session spring security last exception if it's null or if uh, there's an error message and then it displays so don't worry yourself about this because I'm not going to get into this. All right, so we want to create another HTML page. It's going to be logout.html. What, what, uh, where does the system go uh, when you log out? Right? Which page does it go to when you click on logout? So we're going to create another page. I'm going to call it logout.html. So the next. I'm going to call it logout. All right. So the logout page, I'm going to just put in this 
say logout home, just say you know, just a normal test in there. And it also will give us a link to go back to the home page. The logout page when you log out, then you also have an opportunity to click on the link to take you back to the home page. Now this is where the work actually is done in this uh, place, in this place, and that is the our app security config. So what I'm going to do at this point, let me just shift this a bit so that I'm actually will not copy this and paste because I want to be explaining it as I type it. Okay. So what happened here? All right, so so let's go to app security config. So we are going to override, hopefully I'm not missing out any step. We are going to override the method that is called HTTP, uh, which is HTTP security. So HTTP, which takes a parameter uh, uh, HTTP security uh, variable. So just right click on, take all the space. All right, so just right click here and go to source and go to override. Go to source and go to override. Override. So there will be two HTTP methods like these two. Uh, is the HTTP is actually com override the configure method. Sorry, so override the configure method. So you're going to override the configure HTTP security and okay. So this is where we are going to specify all the necessary parameters needed for login. So first I'm going to take out all this trash from here. So um yeah, everything is fine. So we're gonna say http dot um wait, okay. So http let's see, yeah, so I'm going to disable cross uh, uh, CSR as CSRF cross site request forgery because in this case uh, we are having the request coming from the same website. So for it not to see it as as, uh, as a threat or as, as a vulnerability, so let's let's disable it. CSRF dot disable. All right. So let's configure auto configure. Let's authorize it to allow login page even without authorization. So we can visit the login page without authorization. That's what we are going to do now. So authorize request and the matches and matches. So and matches and it's going to be slash login and permit all. So permit all for login, okay. And we need to require that every other request coming is going to, has to be authenticated. So I'm going to say any request dot, uh, dot authenticated. So sometimes this IntelliSense can be a problem. Just go all the way back. Sometimes it's, it's, it's kind of freezing up. Okay, so. okay. Um, any request should be authenticated. So that is what I do here. And we need form logging. So, so we need dot form logging. Dot form logging. Uh, yeah. So we also need to specify the login page. Uh, yeah. We need to specify the login page. Okay. So dot login page. Is going to be slash login, so we don't need to specify the HTML because the the the, the time view is going to understand that this page is the HTML. Dot permit everything. 
Okay. We also need to specify the logout page as well. And the logout. That we need to specify the logout page, that's fine. But when when somebody logs out, it needs to invalidate HTTP session and also play authentication. That's what we need to do. So the logout dot invalidate invalidates HTTP session and set it to true. And then we have to play up and clear the authentication. So we have to play the authentication so that if the user tries to navigate back after logging out, he clicks on back button, he can't get there because the authentication has been cleared. So set it to true as well. And finally, we need to uh, uh, specify allow logout page without authorization, the same without authentication, the same way we did for login. So the logout request matcher, um, new, and path request matcher is going to be slash logout. Um, okay, perfect. So hopefully everything is fine. And finally, I'm going to specify the logout success URL. Logout success URL. So this is it. Is going to be logout success. Of course, this logout success is going to lead us to the logout page. So it's just the URL, which is the, the URL to enter, uh, uh, the URL that shows on the on the address bar. Logout success. So permit all. I think we are good to go at this point. So now the next thing we need to do, now I have all this, all the procedures right here for you in case you miss out anything. Now I explain line by line what is happening here. So you can read it up, this TRL, disable, authorized uh, request, everything that's explained right on my website. Find it in the description box below. Now we need to write the method for login and logout. So I'm, I'm just going to copy and paste. So we are going to write this in the controller file, which is this. So this is the URL for login and uh, also for logout success. So this is the URL as well. So when a user visits the logout, it's going, it's going to come to this page and execute the, and, and execute logout. And yeah, so Spring for security is going to take care of every other thing. All right, so I'm done. So let me just relaunch this application and let's see. So I'm going to relaunch it and let's try to log in. Now you are going to see that when we try to visit a page, um, it's going to it's going to display the. Wait, are we missing out something? Uh, hopefully not. So if we visit a page, let's say the home page, which needs you need to be authenticated before you visit the home page. So when you try to visit the home page, it's going to request you to authenticate. It's going to, it's to authenticate. It's going to re redirect you to the login page, and then you need to log in. So let's see how all this works. Let me see. Um, All right, so let's go to, meanwhile, let me just make sure everything works. Okay, so it's still coming up. Okay, so Tomcat started on port 8080. So let me just go to HTTP, HTTP, um, local host 8080, I'm going home. Home, take note, I'm, I went home. It's going to redirect us to the login page. As you can see, these are custom login page we built. And let me try to log in at this time. The same user one, uh, user one. 
and one, two, three, four, submit. Now the password is in plain text, uh, which is not good. So let's set the type to be password. So maybe that's the last thing I'm going to do at this point. So let's get back to the login page and let's set the type to be password. So type uh, to be password. And let me save and relaunch. Okay, so if it comes to this point, you've gotten up to this point, thumbs up to you, you've done great. Remember to subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button below this video right now. And if you have any challenges following any of my courses, any of my classes, let me know as well in the comment box below. So, let me tell you about the next class we are going to be doing. The next class will be, we are going to be talking about how to use Alt 2.0. So, this is a situation whereby it's also called single sign on. So, you want to use your Facebook login, you want to use your Google login instead of to remember this or to use a username and password here. You want your users to be able to use their Facebook accounts. It's, it's tell you, it may have something like login via Facebook or login via Google, stuff like that. That is called Alt 2.0 OAU. O -A -U -T -H actually open authorization or open authentication because so that's exactly is different from uh, there are two different things we are talking about so everything works so let's go back here and i'm going home but expectedly it's going to show the login page because we already logged out all right so we are simply checking if is going to use passwords uh, characters. One, two, three, four, perfectly okay. So I'm gonna stop here. I'd like to remind you to subscribe and also let me know if you have any challenges. Leave me a comment and we'll see you in the next class.